welcome. Today we are going to go over clinical trial startup using a work breakdown structure for effective planning and the startup of our clinical trials. I am going to be your trainer today. I have been in clinical research for over 25 years now, and the one thing that I enjoy doing is training, but also teaching you tools to be able to assist you in either managing clinical trials or working with your sites. And in particular today, looking at developing a strategy that you can use and implement with your team to be better in clinical trial startup. And we're going to look at our objectives for today. So our learning objectives. So today we are going to identify three benefits of a communication plan that is used during clinical trial startup. We're also going to examine a work breakdown structure, or WBS, and how we can use this in clinical trial startup. And then also we're going to identify situations where a work breakdown structure can have a positive impact on your clinical trial startup planning. Some of the goals that I think that we have when it comes to trial startup is that we also know that each site that is initiated, we know that this is one step closer to this patient being able to be enrolled in the clinical trial. We know, though, that we cannot control a patient in agreeing to participate in the trial. That falls down to the subject. But if I have the investigative site initiated, this gives the site the opportunity to then expose potential patients that are eligible to the informed consent and to be screened for the study. We also know that we have to do our due diligence, though, as clinical trial professionals, that even before we decide to select an investigative site to receive what I call the startup packet in order to begin the process of clinical trial agreement and then IRB approval, that we've done our due diligence to ensure that this investigative site has not only the subjects that could enroll in the trial, but they're also set up for success. This particular webinar will not be addressing that aspect. So that is a whole other aspect of startup that we also need to ensure that we are successful in doing. But we're really now looking at also this goal, which is what I say is this, another goal is to help us enroll these patients so we are one, class, one step closer to the discovery of new treatments, whether this is using drugs, devices, biologics for patients or subjects that come into the study, or to help us in the development of our trials as we go through phases. The obstacles that we have when it comes to clinical trial startup. Let's, what are the current obstacles that you're facing in clinical trial startup? Once you send this packet, I heard Tara mention that this clinical trial agreement, sometimes those timelines can be a challenge for you because that may not be the same timeline that the site sees. Tara, I'm going to unmute to see if you have any more to explain perhaps some of the challenges that you're encountering. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of follow-up that occurs with CTAs. We send all those essential documents out with the welcome packet and sometimes it's just crickets and the CTA is the big one that we try to, because we know it takes time on both ends, our end and theirs. So we, we try to like get that going right out the gate. But a lot of the times it's all of the essential documents and we, we try to collect what we can before the SIV occurs so that we have a good idea before we walk in and can kind of make that happen a little quicker. And then there's some things like EDC user access that has to be done prior to SIV so that they can have the access during the SIV to play in the sandbox and stuff like that. And sometimes it just takes several emails and, and follow up to get, get documents in. That's one obstacle that I know that we face. 
Thank you.